Vi, this is Vi, and we are at Reagan National Airport, just outside of DC, because I have come to NIH to have surgery. So, how did we get here? I thought I would get you all caught up on the situation with my kidneys. So I have von Hippel-Lindau, which is a disease that causes tumors to grow in different parts of the body. One of the parts of the body where tumors grow is my kidneys. Back 18 years ago, I had surgery on my left kidney. And then three years later, I had surgery on my right kidney. At that time, they removed all of the tumors and both kidneys were back to zero. So they had zero tumors. And slowly the tumors have grown back on both kidneys. So I go to my doctor in Bellevue, Washington, and every six months he either has an ultrasound or an MRI of my kidneys or a CT and make sure that the tumor growth hasn't reached a threshold of three centimeters. Three centimeters is the threshold that NIH set up saying that at three centimeters, it's time to take the tumors off. The tumors are made of clear cell or renal cell carcinoma. And so for that reason, letting them grow past three is kind of dangerous because the cancer can start to spread. So fast forward to 2021 when I went to NIH. So I went to NIH and they called me a week before and said, hey, do you wanna get your kidneys MRI'd? and have a consult with our doctors. I hadn't been in the kidney study in a really long time, so I was like, sure, I'll take a free MRI. So when I was out at NIH on my last day, I had an MRI of my kidneys, and those results came back into their patient portal, and I saw the results, and the biggest tumor on my left kidney was at 2.7 centimeters. So I knew that I was in the clear, that I didn't need surgery. A month later, I had a telehealth follow-up visit with them, and this is how it went. On the left kidney, however, there's a new lesion that was not seen from the, the last imaging that we had in March 2017. Okay. Um, that's at the lower pole of the kidney. And it's, um, there are two measurements. Typically, we measure them uh, by the width of 2.6 centimeter. Um, however, when we look at it in what we call the coronal, so the top-down measurement, um, then it goes beyond three centimeters that measure. It's at three point one in the other measurements. But it's not something I believe that was in your report from, from that imaging. With that, uh, given the growth rate and the size of three centimeter, we, we would be considering surgery. Okay. Uh, but that's like an all Okay. There's no huge emergency here. It's something that promptly would need to be to be dealt with, uh, but not uh, expedited and was bringing you back yesterday. Okay, so what would the surgical approach be then? Would it be an open again? We would go robotic. Okay. Uh, for, for that, we, we do a large number of our, of our repeat operation on the same kidney. Uh, at least the first repeat, oftentimes the second repeat, uh, is less that it's up to third or fourth surgery that then we, robotic becomes very difficult. And, uh, we, we need to defer back to, to open, but we're all, always going to give it a try. Second time like that, uh, it should be good to go for a robotic approach.
ultrasound machine, cut out all the tumors and put it back. And it's helped me for 18 years. So I'm not in any hurry to have surgery because I've gotten away with it this long. They told me that I needed to do a weekday so the IV team could start my contrast. And of course they're not calling the IV team. She's gonna try to do it herself. So we're heating it up. I'm done. I'm done, I'm done. And I've been without food all morning. <laughs> and I have been drinking lots of water, so I am starving. And we get to go home. Yay! So I thought I would talk about the procedure or the scan so that if you have to have a CT for your first time, you know what it would be like. Especially of your kidneys. Mine was of my kidneys. So abdominal CT. I checked in. They called me back. She placed the IV in my arm, which took quite a while because we warmed my arm up first. It's easier to place an IV in a warm arm than a cold arm. Then she brought me back, had me lay down on the bed that goes into the CT machine. I had to lay with my arms over my head. They put a blanket on me. The machine pulled me in. It told me to hold my breath. I held my breath. The CT kind of spun around for a while. Then they told me I could breathe. I breathed. And they did that a couple times. And then they started the IV contrast. The gentleman that was working with her came out, made sure that the IV started. And so I could feel it in my arm because I had my IV in my forearm because I've had lots and lots of IVs. So most of my veins don't work anymore. Then they took the pictures again, this time while the IV contrast was going in. With my arms above my head, holding my breath. They pulled me out of the machine. He unhooked the IV contrast. We waited six minutes. Then I went in the machine. They took a picture again. I was free to go. There's the weird sensation of the contrast going into the vein. And then I could taste the saline solution at the beginning. And then it gave me a sensation that the back of my throat was really, really warm. And then I had the sensation that I was wetting my pants. So you do not want to be disturbed by that. You aren't wetting your pants. It just feels that way. It's really not that bad of a procedure. It's very quick compared to an MRI machine. The pictures are much, much quicker and it's much quieter. It's just the dealing with the contrast. What happens next is that the radiologist who works for the hospital there will read my CT. And I do have tumors on my kidneys and my doctor, Tom, when he put the orders in, said for them to measure them. Some radiologists will just measure the largest tumor or just mention multiple tumors, but he asked for actual measurements. So the radiologist will measure the tumors using previous scans I've had there as a reference. And then he will type up a report and that report will go into my chart, which is the patient portal for hospitals and clinics that are on the Epic software. And so it'll go into the patient portal and I'll get a notice that I have a new test result in my chart and I'll be able to go onto the app or, or on my computer and I'll be able to look at the results of that M at the results of the CT and see what the measurements were of my tumor. So I got the CT back and the biggest tumor measured at 3.3, which meets criteria for surgery. Today is my follow-up appointment with my local doctor. So we can talk about the CT results that I saw already on my chart. Uh, I just saw you the other day, right? July 6th. Yep, and then I had the CT. Oh, okay. I think the CT has just a little bit better resolution, more accurate. Yeah. I see a tumor in the left. Yeah, it's kind of, it's looking more like a 3.2. Yeah. 3.414. It seems to be over the, let me, t let me show you. Right there. You see that left kidney lower pole? Yeah. See, I measured it out at 3.14. Do you see that? 
Yeah, they measured it at 3.3. It's on that borderline size at this point. You know, that we have that three three centimeter rule. We may have to bite the bullet on this one. You know, and this has been how long since the left kidney surgery? Has Eight. it been have you enjoyed Eight. a many years? Eighteen years. Eighteen? <laughs> Eighteen. Isn't that like a world record or something? I, I hope so. I'm scheduled to have a left partial nephrectomy through robotic surgery of my left kidney at the National Institutes of Health uh, in the fall. But the doctor's really, really good. He's removed 800 of these tumors. So he's the person that I really have to have this surgery by. I've not taken the news very well. It's made me really sad. I don't want to have this surgery. If you've ever been hit or punched in the kidneys or had a kidney infection or anything to do with your kidneys, you know, they hurt. <laughs> and this surgery is gonna hurt. So I'm pretty frightened. My last kidney surgery was an open surgery where they just filleted me like a fish and cut me open into the surgery. This is gonna be way less invasive because the plan is to start with the robot and do the laparoscopic surgery and only go to open if something goes wrong. So hopefully, it'll be okay. And of course, I'm going to take you along and we'll film as much of it as we can. And you'll get to see what it's like in case you need to have this surgery. But I just have to be honest that my attitude is not very good. <laughs> well, thank you for watching this medical update. If you want to see more medical stuff, there's some videos here. And down below is a video that YouTube picked out just for you.